cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all. Hi, welcome to Bishop Hannington um, for our 6.30 evening service. Uh, I am Joe and I am your host for this evening. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I'll pray for us to start off today. Father God, thank you so much for a lovely evening to gather and worship you and to praise your everlasting name. Amen. All right, if we can all please stand and sing, come praise and glorify, and then who you say I am. Come praise. Come praise and glorify our God, the Father of our Lord. In Christ he has in heavenly realms his blessings on us poured. For pure and blameless in his sight he destined us to be. And now we've been adopted through his Son eternally. To the praise, to the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are the God who saves. Come praise and glorify our God who gives his grace in Christ. Our sins are washed away, redeemed through sacrifice. In Him God has made known to us the mystery of His will, that Christ should be the head of all His purpose to fulfill. To the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are the God who saves. Come praise and glorify our God, for we believe the word, and through our faith we have a sin the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit guarantees our hope until redemption's done. Until we join in endless praise to God the three in one. To the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are the God who saves. To the praise of your glory, to the praise of your mercy and grace, to the praise of your glory, you are 
That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. The sun, whom the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of. He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Oh, the Son sets free. Oh, He's free indeed. I'm a child of Yes, I am in my Father's house. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I'm chosen. Oh, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me not against me i am who you say i am i am chosen not forsaken i am who you say i am you are for me not against me i am who you say i am oh i am who you say i am whom the sun sets free Oh, it's free and deep. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's, in my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's, oh, in my father's this house there's a place for me i'm a child of god yes i am in my father's house there's a place for me i'm a child of god yes i Thank you. There's a place for me in the Father's house through what Jesus has done. Amen. Amen. Isn't that just amazing that we, we are who God says we are? We're children of God. Um, we are going to join together and say the creed. Uh, should, the, the words should appear on the screens. Um, so if you would say with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Vir uh, his parents, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen indeed. Just powerful words that we have the, uh, the privilege of saying here tonight. And in that vein, we're going to continue and um, say our confession, which can be found in the service sheet and also on the screens. So if you will join with me and say, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we have some BH family news to talk about. Uh, if you are unaware, Rico Tice is coming in to do an amazing talk. Good news for everyone. And if you could and are willing to go to that, please sign up at the back uh, so they are able to gauge refreshment numbers. It's not a, they won't take a register. It's just for nice to know who's going and how many so they can plan accordingly. So if you could sign up at the back, the sheets right by the door. Um, we also, on Tuesdays, we had the Bible overview. Now, it's not a problem if you miss the first one. They're not going to say, you missed the first one, get out of here. You're welcome to come. Um, I hear it's brilliant, and you won't regret going. <laughs> uh, we also have the APCM, which... I was told what the acronym meant, and I have forgotten, but it's essentially the uh, annual church meeting, so please come along to that next Sunday um, here at, I think here, here? Yes, here at 4.45, so just before the evening um, on the 28th, uh, yes. We also have the KO quiz, yeah, woo, they're, they're going back to Spain, and to do so there. They're fundraising for a quiz on the 10th of May. Uh, I believe last year the winners were the younger lot. So if, if people want to come and try to dethrone them, uh, I hear the prize is amazing. I think it was a pack of celebrations last year. So if you're a fan of celebrations, please come along. Um, and in the same, same note, there is the Spanish Tea Afternoon happening on the 2nd of June. Uh, you don't actually have to speak Spanish to come. That's not a requirement. Just turn up at the Yak on the 2nd of June. And, yeah, and finally, we are... Is that time of year where the PCC is running? And um, I didn't know what the PCC was until Thursday. And I was, um, I was at the Sarjadine's house, and I, uh, I said to Nigel, what does the PCC do? Uh, which he did not... Like I, I meant it genuinely, but he thought I was just asking what they do. But they are very important. So um, if, you're, if you want to nominate someone, sign up, sir, at the uh, meeting point. And, um, yeah, put your name forward. I think if you have any enthusiasm, you have a good chance going for you. So <laughs> please, please do sign up. But um, we are going to now stand and sing. We come to worship now. Stand together. We come to worship now, you we adore. In spirit and in truth, we praise you, Lord. You fill us up with joy. Capture our hearts, help us to pour out your love. You called us out of darkness into light, brought with your royal, precious blood. You gave us life. We will declare your greatness, Lord, and lift you high. One church, one God, we are your family. Lord, teach us how to pray as Jesus prayed. Pour out. 
melt our hearts to you, giving you praise. Lift up our hands in prayer, calling to you, knowing you always hear. You called us out of darkness into light, born with your all your precious blood, you gave us life. We will declare your greatness, Lord, and lift you high. One church, one God, we are your family. Good news is given to us, teach us to go. We are the salt and light, living with hope. Your spirit in us now, help us to grow. We long for you to be known. You called us out of darkness into light. Born with your royal, precious blood, you gave us light. We will declare your greatness, Lord, and lift you high. One church, one God, we are your family. You called us out. You called us out of darkness into light. Born with your royal, precious blood, you gave us life. We will declare your greatness, Lord, and lift you high. One church, one God, we are your family. One church, one church, one God. We are your family, one church, one God. We are your family. Thank you, God, that we are your family, one in Christ. Amen. Please sit down. Just amazing that we are God's family. And... Um, we are, we're now going to hear from Matt to read the Bible, and then Phil will preach to us. Uh, so please sit back, listen, and enjoy. Thanks very much, Chu. Yes, grab a Bible, if you haven't already got one. Proverbs chapter 9. Recently we've been going through Proverbs in themes. And this week, we're thinking about Proverbs and friendship, but landing in Proverbs chapter 9. And Phil will help us with that in a bit. That's found on page 642 of the Bibles in front of you. Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine she has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city, let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker, invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house, on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way, let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, food eaten in secret is delicious. 
But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. You don't have to keep your Bibles open at that particular reading. What a strange reading. It doesn't mention friendship at all, does it? And my task this evening is to to bring out what Proverbs says about friendship. But listen on and all will be revealed. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that we are your friends because of what the Lord Jesus has done. And we come this evening as your friends to hear to hear you, to hear you speaking to us. And we pray that you would speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, help us to understand what it means to be a friend and help us to learn from the the wise teaching in this, your book. Amen. When I was given the subject of tonight's sermon, friendship from the book of um, Proverbs, I was pleased. I thought, well, that's good. That's a nice, easy subject. We all need to learn things about how we can be maybe better friends or how we can be good to our friends. Friendship is important, isn't it, in so many ways. And bearing in mind that there are some 900 proverbs which start in chapter 10. So the the chapter that we read, chapter 9, is almost like the, 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 the very final thing before the beginning of these 900 wise sayings, that most of which were written by um, King Solomon. But I thought, well, there's bound to be something in here about friendship that we can all learn things from and that I can teach not only myself, but you guys as well. But as I dug into the 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs, really there's nothing like that at all. You know, like a friend in need is a friend indeed, or that kind of stuff. Or I think I've got one here, um, where is that? In the cookie of life, friends are the chocolate chips. You know, that kind of sentimental stuff. There's nothing like that in the book of Proverbs. And I was quite surprised as to what I found as I dug into it. So so what does God want us to learn about friendship from this book that we call a book of wisdom? And, And it's this, which sounds strange. Friendships can be deadly. So choose your friends very, very carefully. That's the wisdom that comes out of the book of Proverbs. And it was quite surprising. And that's why we, we had the reading of, in chapter 9, because we, we are reminded then, before we get into the Proverbs, of these two characters that we've got to know in, in the first 10 chapters, wisdom and folly. And we've been following them along and, and how that they're, they're both calling out, aren't they? We had it in chapter 9. That they stand on the city top and they're calling out to people to follow me, passers by. Follow in my ways. And, and both are calling out. Both promise certain things. In modern parlance, we'd, we'd call them influencers, wouldn't we? YouTube influencers. They're there calling out. Follow me. Follow my ways. And just before we get into what Proverbs does teach about friendship, let's remind ourselves about who these two characters are who who want to influence our lives. First of all, let's look at folly. She appeals to the senses. She's very persuasive. She's flatterer. She's a flatterer. She flatters people. She likes a bit of gossip. She promises pleasure. She promises gratification. She promises fun. Follow me, listen to me, and all these things I will gift you. And she is out seeking people to follow her. She entices them into her way of life. In chapter 7, verse 12, we we, 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 we read, at every corner she lurks. Wherever you turn, she is there. Folly is there. Later on in that same same, um, chapter, with persuasive words, she leads astray, seducing with her smooth talk. But ultimately, as we heard in chapter 9, her path leads not to life, but to death. Chapter 7 again, her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. What about wisdom? She calls out too. Does not wisdom call out, chapter 8? In fact, 
she raises her voice. She cries aloud to all mankind, we read in chapter 8. But her call is very much one of warning. She appeals to the mind. She rebukes folly. She says, repent, repent at my rebuke, and then I'll pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. And unlike folly, who comes seeking people to follow her, we, in a way, we have to seek out wisdom. Chapter 7 again. Those who seek me, says wisdom, find me. And her path doesn't lead to death and destruction. Her path leads to life and to a knowledge of God. She says, my mouth speaks what is true. All the words of my mouth are just. Those who find me find life. So there we have wisdom and folly. You've heard their various calls. So what then does Proverbs teach about friendship? Interestingly, there is a lot of warning in the Proverbs about the danger of having bad friends, foolish friends that will lead you astray. Chapter 18, verse 24, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. The Apostle Paul quoted to the Corinthian Christians, bad company corrupts good character. Folly says, come and enjoy my company. Come and enjoy my friendship. It's fun. It's frivolous. You can be free to be yourself. You can be free to, to do what you really want to do. Come with me, says Folly. Walk with me. But wisdom says, no, 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 no. Come to me. Seek my friendship. It's serious. It's safe. It keeps you secure in the love of God. Walk with me, says wisdom. What about the influence of our friends? Do friends influence our lives? Yes, they certainly do. As parents, Alison and I did all that we could to lead our children into what we call good friendship groups because we know that bad company corrupts good character. Friends have a massive influence on, on, on the way that we live our life. A bad group of friends can change a person's character very quickly because bad company does corrupt good character. It's not an empty saying. It's a frightening truth. How many parents have seen their children's good character corrupted, literally destroyed by bad company? Bad company always seems so much more fun, doesn't it? That's the trouble. So much more fun, especially to the rebellious youth. Where's the rebellious youth that's here tonight? Rebellious youth goes in all ages. I can tell you, there is the rebellious youth in us all. Even those of us that are, you know, getting to the end of things, getting gray-haired, and there is still the rebellious youth in there. The rebellious youth is seen in children. We are all, by nature, rebellious to the things of God, rebellious to the call of wisdom. But bad company, as I said, seems so much more fun. Come with me, says Folly. Let's break some rules. Let's break some laws. Let's break some windows. Let's break some hearts. This is what Folly calls us to do. Let's have fun doing these things. Who cares where it leads? Life is for living now. Let's party. As Paul says to the Corinthians, quoting again, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Now is the time for living. Tomorrow we're going to die. Now is the time to party. This is what Folly says. And, and she pushes the boundaries of sense and of safety. She lives on the highs and the pleasures and the adrenaline of life. Folly's voice is by far the loudest in today's society, isn't it? Wherever you turn, she lurks at every corner. Boy, she does. Every book that you read, every film that you watch, every thing that you see on the internet, it's folly's voice, isn't it? Calling us to follow the way of folly. Every street corner. And what she promises sounds so attractive to our fallen human nature. It's so appealing to us. You can understand people because it sounds so good. It's too good to miss. But there is, thankfully, another voice. Wisdom still calls out. She calls out through the pages of, of this book. And she calls out through the voices of her faithful friends. Interesting, this past week, we, it's, it's 50 years since I became a Christian. And I'd, I'd forgotten that. But a friend of mine who was very instrumental in me becoming a Christian texted to say, 
you know, 50 years ago, Phil, you became a Christian. So we decided to meet up, which is very exciting. A couple of weeks' time, Dave and I are going to meet up. And 50 years on, we're still working, walking with the Lord. Isn't that, you know, wonderful? It, was, it must have been a genuine conversion for us both. And, and, and we were talking about that. And both of us, we, we were led to this very early on. There was something deep inside our, our soul. We were both from non-Christian backgrounds, yet very quickly we wanted to read the Bible. And he lived in a pub somewhere near New Haven with his mum and dad, and life was difficult. And he just had this desperate urge to read the Bible. And they had one of these big old family Bibles. They, remember those great old things that are about that thick? And he thought, well, I just, he got this strong urge to read the Bible. And he, he went downstairs one evening and dusted it off and took this big old authorized version up to his bedroom and read it. And God spoke to him through that wisdom, spoke to him the wisdom of God. And we, as God's children, God uses us to speak wisdom to one another and to those who are listening to the call of folly. Her call. Wisdom's call is to seek good company, to seek good friends, and then your character is molded by them. It, it, rather than folly destroys, folly corrupts, wisdom builds up, wisdom makes better, wisdom improves, wisdom perfects. Wisdom's still got a bit of work to do in me, but hopefully by the time we get there, it does. And you see Christians growing. And they grow in goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. These are good things. To grow in these is to grow in wisdom. And you are so much better. If you bear those fruit, we'll be very useful in society, amongst our friends, in the church. This is fruit that is, is beautiful to behold. So what lessons can we draw from this first point? These two characters. Choose friends wisely. Young people, this is for you. I'm looking at you now. Okay? You listening? Ears pinned back. When you go to college, when you go to university, at school, choose friends wisely. If you don't, they will lead you astray. And they sound so good and so, so much fun. Grown-ups, us that with the grey hair, choose our friends wisely still. They can lead us astray. They can corrupt our good character. We need to actively choose friends wisely. That's the teaching of Proverbs about friendship in one way. So, what about friendship in marriage? Proverbs talks loads about marriage. That surely, marriage is the most intimate and deep of friendships. Two become one. Proverbs said in 1822, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favour from the Lord. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. It doesn't say she who finds a husband. I don't know why it doesn't say that. It's, it's the other way around. Maybe because it's Solomon giving wisdom to his son. Let's go with that, shall we? He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The teaching here is that marriage is good and it brings God's, God's favor and God's blessing. Marriage is being attacked from all angles. We as Christians must send out the mass message and live out the message that marriage is good. It really is good. And it brings God's favor and God's blessing, not only to those within the marriage, but to society. Marriage it is a blessing to society. Marriage is a blessing to children. Marriage is a blessing. It brings God's favor and God's blessing. Protect our marriages stand up for marriage as an institution. You don't have to be married to have God's favor. You don't have to be married to have God's favor. Paul advises the, the unmarried folks in Corinth. He says to them, literally, it's good to stay unmarried. That's his advice. It's good to stay unmarried. Why? Because then they can serve the Lord in an undivided and wholehearted way. Because he says to them, those who marry will face many troubles in this life. Amen, says um, a good percentage of the con congregation. Those who marry will face many troubles in this life, especially when their children heed folly's call. I think the hardest time for parents, my experience has been, when your kids are making those bad friends 
And you, there's nothing you can do in a way. You, think, you warned them and you told them, but there they go. And, oh, no, they're with such and such a body again. That little character that you've worked so hard to, to make good is being corrupted. How much more care needs to be taken in the choosing of a husband or wife? Because as, as, it's, as we need to be careful in the choosing of our friends, youngsters, those of you that want to get married, choose your wives or husbands carefully. Don't rush into marriage. Are you single? Do you want to be married? Then make it a matter of regular prayer. Pray. Pray hard. Keep on asking. Not in desperation, but in trust. With an open and willing heart that says to God, not your will in marriage, but mine. But no, not my will, sorry, but yours be done. And if you want me to be single, Lord, fine but I really would like to be married. He's open to that. He knows our hearts. And, and sometimes we need to pray that. My eldest son took a long time to get married. And, and I remember saying to him one day, you know, are you, are you happy being single? No, I'd really like to be married. He's married now. It took a long time, didn't it, to come, Alison? Parents, pray for your children. Alison, she prayed for our children from birth that they would find their, that, that their partners in life, their future wives, wives or husband, and it took a while for them to come along, but along they came. We could spend a whole sermon looking at the wife of noble character in Proverbs chapter 31. Verse 1 says, a wife of noble character, who can find? I found one, bless her. She is worth far more than rubies. How precious is a wife of noble character? And then it goes on this great list of this wife thing. You know, we should hold it up to our wife. <laughs> Proverb, no. This is, this is the, the ultimate. And it ends at, at verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Like all good friendships, marriages need to be worked at. They, we need to follow the way of wisdom. Uh, uh, rather than folly in the way that we deal with, with our problems and difficulties in marriages. I'm at the stage now where I, that I've got a, a good bunch of friends and, and we talk about life. It's lovely, really, friendships. I'm a real loner in life, but I've just got such a good bunch of friends. I don't, don't deserve it. Friendship as a Christian is so important and we need to work on those friendships. And most of my friends are really happily married, my age. It's lovely to hear it. They are really happy in their marriages. And that, that's a wonderful thing, far more than the unhappy ones. There are unhappy ones. There are some famous and oft-quoted verses in Proverbs, better to live on the corner of a roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife, better to live in a desert than with a, a nagging wife, and so on. We'll, we know that. We'll leave them there. It raises an eyebrow and gives us a smile and stuff. But quarrelsome and nagging, rather than, I don't know, get a bit uppity about it, just pray, Lord, let me not be like that. Let me not be quarrelsome and nagging. Make me sweet. Make me like a ruby and so on. And for us guys, whatever it is that drives our, our wives mad, pray, Lord, let me not be like that anymore. Let make me be a really good husband. Make me be a really good wife. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. King Solomon, who wrote these, who God gave him wisdom like no other. The Proverbs, when you read them, honestly, they're amazing wisdom. Yet King Solomon, he wrote these things down. And yet 700 wives and 300 concubines didn't do him a power of good. Because on the whole, towards the end of his life, we read in 1 Kings 11, his wives led him astray. As he grew old, they turned his heart after other gods. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Solomon, you foolish guy. You should have known better than that. He followed the advice of wisdom. He befriended, sorry, folly. He befriended folly and he knew better. So we're never too old. To, 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 remember, to learn these lessons. So the lesson from this point is, one, choose your wife and husband carefully. Don't rush into it, youngsters. Take your time. Wait for God's person to come along. Marriage is God's gift to be, to be lived out in God's way and in God's time. Next point, friendship with God. Friendship with God? Is that possible? This is the ultimate in friendships, isn't it? This is the friendship above all others 
we need to find and cultivate in every way. Easter Sunday morning, our beloved vicar Nick declared the glory and wonder of all that Jesus had done through his perfect life, his sacrificial death, and his mighty resurrection. And Nick said, it's made possible for us to be friends with God. Sometimes we just, hold on a minute, it's made it possible for us to be friends with God who were once his enemies. Can we really be friends with, can we know a friendship with the living God? Yes. Jesus said to his disciples, didn't he, in John chapter 15, I no longer call you servants, I call you my friends. We who are disciples of Christ are friends with God. We should cultivate and enjoy that friendship. In four weeks' time, here is a, a bit of an advert, I'm, I'm preaching again here at this exact, exact place in Proverbs on the theme of God in Proverbs. I will open up then what it means to be a friend of God, how we can be friends with God, how we can maintain that friendship. So come along on the 12th of May and learn more about being God's friends. But just tonight, we can be God's friend. He wants us to be his friends. That's the good news, isn't it? So let's summarize, let's conclude, let's apply these truths. We started off looking at two influential characters in Proverbs, folly and wisdom. Both are calling out. Both are seeking people to follow them and their way of life. They're both trying to get people to befriend them. Folly represents very much this world, the now, appeals to our earthly desires. It offers pleasures now, the pleasures of sin. Moses, we read, chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. We used to sing a hymn, didn't we? Make friends of God's children, help those who are weak. Let's do that. Let's make friends of God's children. Folly ultimately leads to darkness and to death. Her pleasures are fleeting, they're temporary, they're deceitful. Her reward, though, is eternal. It's forever. Death here is eternal separation from all the goodness of God. Wisdom also cries out. Wisdom represents God's kingdom, God's life, life in all its fullness, the, the realm we enter through our new birth in Christ. Wisdom's pleasures are lasting pleasures. We, we live a life of fellowship and friendship with God that seriously, honestly lasts forever. It never ceases the friendship that we begin now is a friendship that goes on forever and ever. To follow wisdom is to turn away from folly, from sin in all its forms and manifestations, to reject folly and to follow the path of life. So as we close, can I ask you a very personal question? Who are you following tonight? Who are you following? Is it wisdom or is it folly? Is it wisdom or folly. Are you living for this life or are you sowing seeds for the life that is the heavenly life? This world or for the one that's to come? James says in his little epistle, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world, friend of folly, becomes an enemy of God. And Moses Let's leave the last word to Moses. Moses was a friend of God. He was described, Moses and Abraham described as friends of God. Moses said to the people of Israel before he died, this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice. Hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life. That's an impossible to. How do we follow wisdom? How do we get wisdom? Christ Jesus has become for us wisdom from God. The wisdom that we need is in Christ. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will gain the wisdom that you need. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you give to us in Christ that gift of wisdom. Help us to draw so near to you that we live a life that is a life of wisdom, that is a blessing to us 
and is pleasing to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Phil. We are now going to stand and sing, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me, and then Nick will come up and we will share in communion. So if you are able, please stand. gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless truth. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. Before my sight, the Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, his power is displayed. To this I hold. My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead Oh, the night has been won And I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ in me No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. My sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, and not I, but through Christ in me. Oh, when the 
race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Please do take your seat. And as we gather at the Lord's table, hear the words of comfort our Saviour Jesus Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear what the Apostle Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what the Apostle John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And together we say, we do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat this bread and to drink this wine, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one offering of himself a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue an ongoing memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. If those who are helping with the distribution of communion would please come forward first.
and as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we'll continue in prayer for the church and the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that wonderful reminder that we are friends with you through your son, Jesus. We thank you that he is the best friend uh, it is possible to have. For greater love has no one than this, that he should lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus has given his life for us. And as we've shared this meal together, we remember and celebrate that friendship with God that is ours in our wonderful and great Savior. And we thank you for the gift of friendship and we thank you for the friends that we have, for the support that they are to us, the encouragement. And Father, we do pray that you will help us to be good friends uh, to those that we know. We pray that we will be generous people, people concerned uh, more with the needs of those who are our friends than with ourselves. We pray that we will be open-handed and open-hearted, that we will be friends in the way that Jesus has been a friend to us. Father, we pray for those who are lonely, for those who yearn for friends but don't have them. Uh, and we pray that you will help us as church family to seek out those who are lonely and to befriend them. Pray for those in our church family who feel isolated. And we pray that you will, uh, as you are a father to the fatherless and a friend to the friendless, that you will also grant friends uh, to those who feel alone. And Father, we pray that you will grant us wisdom in choosing friends, in uh, knowing how to uh, discern the effect that other people have on us. But we pray uh, that as we do that, our great concern would be for their good and to be a blessing to others. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, as many of our church family uh, are still over in Angering, uh, uh, rejoicing with the people of St. Margaret's Church at the appointment of Ben as their associate vicar and as they welcome uh, ben and Morag and uh, their children. Father, we thank you for their friendship over these last years. We thank you for all that they have brought uh, to the life of our church. Uh, and uh, these words from Philippians chapter one ring so true for us. I thank my God every time I remember you in all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you for Ben and for Morag, for William, for Evie and Freddie. We thank you for the good work that you have begun in their lives and thank you that we can trust them into your hands. And we thank you for their partnership in the gospel that partnership that continues as they seek to see your kingdom grow in Angmering, as that village grows. Lord, we pray that you will bless their ministry and their family life, that you will bless them with good friendships uh, and with wonderful opportunities to share the goodness of Jesus. So Father, we thank you for the joy of this evening's service there, uh, and we pray uh, that you will establish them in that community and use them to bless others in wonderful and mighty ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
And Father, as we pray for our own church family here, uh, as we continue to seek to grow in grace. I'm going to pick up Paul's prayer uh, in the same chapter. This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Father, we make our plans uh, and we set our goals. But in the end, what matters is your grace at work in us, producing fruit that is pleasing to you. And Father, we pray that we may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, that we might know you and so become like you. And Father, may that be so true of our church family that it is obvious to a needy world that there is something extraordinary to be found here in the power of your gospel. And Father, we pray you will cause us to be growing disciples here in Hove and for the sake of the world. So Father, you know our needs and we pray that you'll provide for them. But you too know our hearts and we pray that you would transform them so that we would be like your son who is such a glorious friend to us. And as we pray for our world, we see such anguish and grief and conflict and we pray for peace. Father, we pray for the ending of hostilities in the Ukraine and for the limiting of hostilities in the Middle East. Father, we pray that you will restrain men of violence who seek to escalate the conflicts in Gaza and in Israel. We pray that you would restrain those on both sides who seek to make capital and take opportunities through violence. And Lord, we pray that you will bring peace to that tortured part of the world and that somehow you will grant wisdom to the leaders of the nations to find a way forward that is just and right and that brings genuine peace to that region. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. And Father, finally we pray for those known to us who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. Father, we pray uh, in a moment of quiet for those known to us who need your healing, who need your comfort and your presence at this time. Father, for many of those who we've named before you, uh, we are at our wit's end to know how their lives could improve, how they could be comforted and healed. And yet, Father, thank you that you never come to the end of your wits, that there is nothing that is beyond your wisdom and nothing that is beyond your power. And we thank you that you can bring good even out of uh, the terrible pain and suffering uh, of those precious people that we've named. And we pray that in your mercy, each of them would have a story to tell of your goodness, uh, even in the midst of dark times. Thank you that you are our shepherd, that you walk with us through the darkest valley and that we do not need to be afraid. So Father, as the day turns to night, we pray uh, that people uh, will find light in the darkness and find comfort and hope in your goodness and in your kindness and in your healing touch. We pray all these things knowing that you hear us because of your son Jesus who has made us your friends. In his name we pray, amen.
We are now going to um, sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So if you're able, please stand. Please be seated. Thank you very much for um, joining of us tonight as we, uh, we learned about friendship and um, what Proverbs has to say. Uh, there will be tea and coffee at the back. Um, I'll close with a prayer. Lord, thank you that we're able to gather here tonight to glorify you and um, hear what you have to say about friendship. Thank you for, um, for Phil, for his amazing sermon. And please can, in the following weeks, we, uh, we reflect on what he said and be able to um, follow you and your example with, your, with our friendship with you through Jesus Christ and not any friendships with poor influences or um, that may lead us astray from you. Thank you so much. Amen. Great. 
Cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet. My Savior on that cursed. 